So Sammy the Volgravano, he's out of prison now. There's a lot of controversy. His, I read his book, his side of the story. You know, Gotti was using him as a fall guy. He had no choice. And well, I've heard, I've heard Gotti's side as well. What, what's your perspective? Well, I know all of that because they used to use Mary's apartment upstairs. That's why the FBI they had two apartments across the street, and they had the place bugged. But then they'd have silence, and nobody would ever see. Nobody would ever see him or, or anybody talking. Then they figured it out. Then they bugged Mary's apartment. And how they got to Sammy was playing the, you know, the whole thing about John saying we got to whack Sammy. He's getting too powerful. And that's when he flipped. Sammy was very loyal. Sammy was, you know, the old school. He, he, he was a mort there. But, uh, what what made him such a good underboss? Powerful, powerful. They followed orders. John was nuts. John was very tough, very tough guy. I knew John early on in life. He used to come down, and he said some t- one thing to O'Neill. O'Neill was his, the guy he emanated. He wanted to be O'Neill. That's why he killed Paul Castellano and my very good friend Tommy Bellotti. Tommy Bellotti was the underboss to Paul when. Uh, Carlo appointed him, but he thought Paul was a businessman. He left O'Neill as the street boss. Well, John thought that was the biggest slap in the face, and he went without the commission's permission and killed both of them in front of Sparks. But I remember John coming around early on, and he couldn't understand how I, we have, we're the same age, how come this guy sits in the club before noon? You have to be made to sit before noon. But these are like my family. And one time he said to O'Neill, he said, I don't understand that kid. O'Neill backhanded him. He said, who are you to understand anything? It's a privilege you have coming here. And your privilege starts at noon. And now you mention this kid to me again. I see the way you look at him. If he gets a splinter, I'm going to stick a telephone pole up your ass. Now don't come around for 30 days. Then John's hatred built up even more for me. <laughs> Wow. How deep was Sinatra in the lifestyle? Well, he was very deep because, well, he was a big earner. And he, he created a lot of problems. Frank used to get drunk. He was a bad drunk. You know, he weighs 128 pounds. He tried to slap me one time. I was 18 years old. I was in Sands Hotel. And I just grabbed his wrist. I said, Frank, you don't want to do that. And he looked at Jilly, who supposedly his bodyguard. I said, what's he going to do? I'll put a bullet in his head right here. <laughs> so that's what I said. I guess I said the wrong thing. <laughs> so I baptized my last son, Luciano. He's my son's godfather. And I got really close with Frank. Did the Italian mafia ever try to reach out to London? There's like some stories about the Cray twins. Well, yeah, well, Craig, the Craig twins. But we had a guy there, George Raft. Before your time, man. No. Yeah, Raft, yeah. 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 No, they stopped it. Believe me, Interpol and your guys stopped that right away. <laughs> right away. So have I got all of your craziest stories out of you today? You don't have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> you got have some you, good ones, though. Have you got time to give us one more? I don't know. Which one could I give you? Um... I, I, I can give you one that's insane. Well, you read my book, the stuff I did with Yeah, you. but I, I got to ask for the people watching this that, who haven't read the book. Okay. I, I, I was dealing with Anand Khashoggi. I don't know if you people know him. He's a big arms dealer. Yeah, arms dealer, yeah. 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 Ma- Robert, Robert Maxwell, all that stuff, yeah. yeah. And, and what, uh, in fact, I'm still friends with his, his basically financier, Bob Shaheen. And he's, I mean, he talked to him on the phone. That's how close I am to him. So we made a deal in Switzerland, which I won't tell you for who, to deliver a nuclear submarine. And I was moving a lot of money at the time. So I had to pick up money from three different places to bring it to Switzerland. They went to the bank. The bank said the money's in deposit. All they need was the final inspection. So they all go, I'm not going to go down there. They all take the, the, uh, the, the final tour, and they come back. and. 
Khashoggi comes back and Bob, that's China got to bring the money back. I said, what happened? He said, he thought we were going to deliver nuclear warheads on it. They thought they would get nuclear warheads. <laughs> That's the funny. I mean, I've done some crazy, crazy things. Wow. Look, Johnny, you've been very generous with your time. Really appreciate it. I've been gripped from start to finish. I could talk to you all day. I urge people to go down below this video and, and click on the link and check your book out. It is absolutely riveting. And um, man, what are your plans for the future then now? You got your movie coming out? Yeah, my movie coming out. I have um, I I created a company that I'm associated with a while ago, four years ago. We own all the quarterly owned family products. So now I have Clemenza's meat sauce in a jar. <laughs> We're an We're an do, you, do you have garotes? No, no, we got everything. But the interesting thing is, uh, I'm creating an online store this month, so you can go online quarterly on family products and buy anything you want. We got 24 SKUs. I have Genco olive oil in the original can. <laughs> I have to do this all my sons and daughters, you know, there's too many kids, too many people. Wow. But I'm, I have a small faction of that. I don't want, I don't want the IRS to think I own this company. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm the brand ambassador. <laughs> you you radiate you radiate positive energy man and I salute you for it and thank you again for coming on but, but while we're in London I just wrote I made my book a one man show I did my first show uh, for Mohegan Sun they own eight casinos here I did it at Falls View in Niagara Falls 1500 people they gave me a two minute two minute standing ovation I take you chronologically through this book with film Marilyn Monroe singing to me, shots of her in the bed. I mean, this stuff that has, nobody's seen these pictures. It's a one-man show. I want to come to London with it. <laughs> wow. When you do, we'd love to get you in the studio and do some more recordings as well. That'd be great. I'm ready. So, if you have any oh. friends. Yeah, i got plenty of friends in London. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Johnny. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it.